Hey guys, welcome back to The Quad Method. Today we're gonna to be talking about a lesser known topic called finger yoga. Some of you may be familiar with this, but I'm sure a lot of you aren't. And if you're struggling with feeling double strokes or triple strokes, just being able to use your fingers, this is gonna be a great video for you. So stay tuned and hope you guys can learn something. So when we're trying to get better at playing drums, we get to utilize different tools to kind of help us realize different things about our mechanics. For example, we talked about drop catch in our double strokes video, which kind of helps us realize how to utilize our fingers with our wrist. Today, we're gonna to be talking about one called finger yoga, which kind of helps us realize how to use our back fingers. And it kind of helps you understand the correlation between using your fingers with rebound. But as you get more familiar with how your fingers work and how to do finger yoga, you're gonna to start to realize that you can feel the back fingers moving whenever you play double strokes or triple strokes or paradiddles or anything that requires some back finger support. So let's go ahead and get started. So the idea here is to isolate your fingers from everything else. You're gonna get rid of your wrist, you're not gonna be using your wrist whatsoever. So to start, we're gonna take our stick, we're gonna go completely French, which if you don't know what that means, it just means rotating your wrist so that your thumb is facing upwards. And this is gonna help isolate our wrist. Then we're gonna play with just the first two fingers. So when you're trying to figure this out, it's okay to start slow. Um, you gotta make sure that you're using rebound because you, there's no way you're gonna be able to prep with just two fingers. But basically try to find the flow, try to find a nice consistent flow where your stick is rebounding and you're getting full strokes and it just feels nice. And again, the most important thing that you need to remember is you have to isolate your fingers from everything else, no wrist. If you see your thumb moving up and down or if you see your thumb knuckle moving up and down, that's usually a bad sign. Make sure all the motion of the stick is coming from your fingers pulling the stick. Once you have that, we're gonna move on to the other three fingers. What you're gonna do is you're going to keep your fulcrum intact. And what you're gonna do is we're going to go down each finger and we're gonna motivate the stick down towards the pad by pulling each individual finger by itself. So when we're going to the middle finger, we're gonna leave our fulcrum on and we're going to play into the pad just by using our middle finger. Notice how the index and the thumb aren't really moving whatsoever. It's just the middle finger that's pulling the stick up towards your palm, which is causing the downward motion. And once the stick hits the pad, the middle finger allows the stick to rebound all the way. What you don't wanna do is you don't want to uh, pull your middle finger in and leave it there so that, so that your stick is choked off and can't rebound. Another piece of advice is make sure that you're feeling the, the stick towards the outside of your fingers or the tips of your fingers. This is gonna give you much more leverage and you're gonna be able to feel the, range, the full range of the stick. The deeper you are in the hand, the less leverage you have. So, you know, doing all this motion doesn't really do anything at all. Cool, now we're gonna move down to the ring, finger, uh, the ring finger. And in my opinion, I think this is one of the easier ones because it's further away from your fulcrum, which gives you a little more torque, which makes it a little easier to kind of pull the stick down. But the same thing applies. Just take it slow at first, make sure you're getting a nice flow, nice consistent rebound. Again, not impeding the stick from rebounding, yet make sure you're still pulling the stick down towards the pad, just using your uh, ring finger. Once you have that figured out, then you can move on to your pinky, which is, you know, the, the harder one. Another good rule of thumb is to make sure that your fingers don't detach from the stick. Obviously, it's not gonna be perfect, but when you're actually utilizing finger, when you're playing other things, your fingers are not gonna leave the stick. All right, so now that we kind of figured out how to do that, now we can put that into a sequence that kind of represents an exercise. So I like to do a four, two, one sequence with one hand where I do um, one measure each finger, just once, and then I go down to two counts each finger and I go through that twice, and then one count each finger where I go down each finger four times. And the tricky thing about this is making sure that you're, you're still letting the flow of the full strokes continue when you're switching finger to finger. The one constant that doesn't change is your fulcrum. The fulcrum should always stay on. You're just motivating the stick using a different finger. I'll post a sheet music with some notes on it for you guys to kind of look at and you know maybe use to help you figure it out. But you can also do other sequences too, like eight, you can do 8-8-16 where every rep of 8-8-16 you switch a finger. I've seen that done before. And it doesn't really matter which sequence you're using as long as you're doing it correctly. So make sure that you're not using wrist, you're isolating each finger and you're only motivating the stick with that isolated finger. And then once you figure out how to use each finger, then you can put them all together and try to figure out how to move the stick with all your fingers together. So if you're struggling with this, here's a couple uh, tips. So you, what you can do is you can flip the stick like such, and you could do the same exercise like this. You're still using the same muscles to pull the stick. However, instead of utilizing rebound, gravity is kind of doing that part for you. So this is gonna help you figure out how to actually move your fingers. 
but then you all, you still have to go back and figure out how to feel that with rebound. But this is just a good way to isolate each finger and figure out how to move that muscle. Another piece of advice I have for you guys is use drum set sticks. So this exercise or this tool is all about speed. You're using your full range of motion to kind of help you feel the stick. But in reality, when you're playing double, triple strokes or what have you, and you're utilizing finger, you're only using like that much. You're really not using very much. When you're playing double strokes, it's all about doing this really fast. Using drum set sticks is gonna help you feel that speed a lot better because it's a lot easier to move. It also helps you feel the weight of the stick more when you switch back to the marching sticks. So here I have a pair of stock 5As, which I'm sure everybody has. I don't know how you can start drumming at all without these being your first pair of sticks. Actually, my first pair of sticks were Ralph Hardiman's, but but my personal favorite are these Vic Firth Keith Carlux. I got introduced to these when I was at Blue Knights. And they're just, they feel great. They're light, they're thin, but basically you're gonna be able to appreciate the weight of your marching sticks a lot more when you switch back to them after using these for a while. And using drum set sticks, so they're gonna allow you, it's gonna allow you to play a lot faster with the finger yoga stuff and still utilize rebound while doing so. So there are also a few other ways to do finger yoga. There is the in between the finger ones. I've done these before where you, you, you switch between fingers, but the same rule applies. You have to isolate the wrist and you can only be using that one isolated finger. Another way you can do it is by taking each finger and using it kind of as its own fulcrum where you kind of go down each finger and it's just the thumb and that finger. This one's a lot harder to do. It requires a lot more strength. But it can still be quite useful. But again, all of these variations have the same rules. No wrist, finger isolation. And make sure that you're utilizing a rebound and you're not choking off the stick. But please, you know, play around with finger yoga for a little bit and start to kind of feel the back fingers and then switch back to what you were doing before. And you're gonna to start to realize that you're, you're gonna be able to feel these a lot more, not just use them, but feel them. And then you can go back, slow it down and start figuring out how, how to use them correctly. And then all these kind of tools are gonna to help you get better at other stuff like flam rudiments and paradiddles. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys were able to learn something from this. Um, this is something that I've been doing since I was in high school and I found it extremely useful and extremely valuable when it comes to maximizing my efficiency with my technique. Hopefully it will do the same for you. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Um, and if not, I'll see you in the next video.